If you guys are anything like me, you're pretty excited by the announcement of Luminar 5. Wait, sorry, Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo. Of course, I'm being a little bit facetious here, but in this update video about Luminar Neo, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the engine that's actually running it. I'll address the question why they've actually had to upgrade the software architecture, and we'll take a look at whether it's actually worth the hype. I've got much more in-depth information about four of the new exciting tools that are gonna be shipping with Luminar Neo as well. And in the comments of the last video, one of the questions that was raised that I'm going to be answering is how much is Skylum paying me? Make a lot of money. Yeah, I do all right for myself. Seriously, how much money you make? I'm going to share that with you as well in this video. What is Luminar Neo and why did I kick off the video calling it Luminar 5? Skylum made it quite clear that it's not an update to Luminar AI, it's not a replacement for Luminar AI, it is a separate image editing software with a very different purpose, but it has a purpose that I think is more akin to the original Luminar 4 and is what that kind of idea has actually evolved into. So on one hand you've got Luminar AI which is perfect for people who are just starting out with photo editing, perhaps people who just want to apply a template template and be done, or for people who just want a fast and effective workflow. It's got raw editing capabilities similar to Lightroom, but it's also got those added benefits of those AI tools that Skylum has brought to us. Now while Luminar AI does contain a complete feature set for editing your photos, some more high-end users do find one of the frustrations is that it's a limited tool set in the fact that you can't reapply tools. You can't use, say, the curves or the hue and adjustment sliders multiple times on the same image. So for photo editors who like to get more creative with their image editing, like me, uh, enter Luminar Neo with the appropriate tagline, create more. So Luminar Neo, built from the ground up, yes, I know you've heard that before, is gonna reintroduce layers in a flexible, non-destructive workflow that's built around a new engine, which is gonna enable them to get around many of those limitations of using multiple processor intensive AI tools. So why the new engine? Now reading the comments in the last video, this actually kind of made me laugh a little bit because people are so skeptical. And I get it because prior to understanding the actual architecture that was going into driving the software and why they had to do it that way, it did seem a little bit of like recreating the wheel just for the sake of generating more revenue. But bear with me because there is a legitimate reason why they've had to do it the way they've had to do it. So historically, photo editors have been built one of two ways. The first type of editor is a Photoshop style, iterative, pixel-based editor where you're making changes one thing on top of the other. It allows for layers and stacking effects and it's a very logical way to build a software application for photo editing. It's worked for Photoshop for years. The second style of photo editor is what's known as a parametric editor. And that's the type of thing like Lightroom, Capture One, and Luminar AI. So for Luminar AI, that was brilliant because it allowed the developers at Skylum to actually really speed up the actual engine behind Luminar AI. We would get much faster results. But Luminar AI, just like Lightroom and Capture One, it can't work with layers. That's just the nature of parametric editors. Skylum used the parametric editing framework to build Luminar AI. And their idea around that was to speed up our workflow because they'd listened to the fact that a lot of users were frustrated by Luminar 4 was just getting too slow as I added Add more and more layers and more features and effects. So Luminar AI is faster, but we can't have layers. So neither one of these frameworks is really ideal to run a modern photo editing application that's wanting to rely so heavily on artificial intelligence. So unfortunately for Skylum, the problem they have is the more AI features that they want to bring to us end users, and the more that you utilize them during your editing process, the more that's gonna push your system resources into a bottleneck and just force your computer into a freeze. So unfortunately Skylum have paid the price for trying to push the boundaries of AI technology onto hardware and software frameworks that just can't handle it. So to move forward with the AI tools that they want to bring forward to us to make our photo editing lives easier, more simple, the very architecture of the code on which those tools sit has had to be rebuilt. So what they've done with Luminar Neo is actually really clever. They've created a hybrid approach where all of the AI tools exist as modular blocks, if you will, that can just be plugged into the program itself. And that actually lends itself for some really positive outcomes. 
basically they're creating a more robust system, it's going to be faster and it's going to be able to be more easily updated because those blocks can be just brought into the program, worked on separately, brought back in. So we're going to see more upgrades, Skylum have committed to this, it's going to be a regular thing and they're going to grow the platform. So all the skeptics out there will keep saying, oh, will you just wait and see, they're going to have another product released this time next year, that's the model that Skylum do. We had the announcement that Luminar AI was a complete rebuild, complete engine, and they're saying the same thing again, but genuinely I believe it's a legitimate reason, and Skylum have assured me that going forward they are going to be committing to this platform because it's going to be one which is going to allow them to grow, allow them to bring new AI tools and put them in. As I was saying before, Luminar AI was limited by the number of tools that could actually be put into its system before it reached that bottleneck and just started to have a complete meltdown. The structure of this framework should alleviate that problem. In my last video, I did say that it's going to be a much faster user experience, which is going to be a really great thing. But look, just how much faster at the moment, I don't know. Until we get hold of a beta that we can actually physically test, you know, I, I can't guarantee how much faster that will be. Honestly, it may just be an incremental increase. It may be a large increase. Like you, I really, really hope it's a big increase. Of course we want that. I'm sorry if that was a lot to take in. I do geek out a little bit on that kind of stuff. I've got a degree in 3D computer visualization. Yeah! So this sort of stuff really gets me interested and very excited. So talking of being excited, let's take a look at four of the tools that we're going to be seeing inside of Luminar Neo. Having recently heard the CEO and co-founder speak on the direction of Skylum, one of the things that became really apparent is they're really just not interested in doing things the way that other photo editing software companies do them. They want to find new, innovative and better ways to allow us photographers to reach our creative vision. And the tool that we'll talk about first, Relight AI, I think is a really good example of this. So inside of Luminar AI, as you probably know, we've got some very clever tools such as Atmosphere AI that analyzes the depth of a two-dimensional scene, converts it into a three-dimensional space, and then we can apply fog based on that distance information 3d depth mapping it's that same technology that they use to create the bokeh ai tool where the further away something is from your subject they can blur it more and the blur recedes as it gets closer to your actual portrait subject so that 3d depth mapping technology exists but i've always thought surely there's better ways to apply this than just adding some fog to our landscape photos, right? And finally, with Luminar Neo's new program engine, they're actually able to bring us more options utilizing that technology, and one of them is Relight AI. So let's take a look at how that works. So the AI is very cleverly going to construct a three-dimensional environment based on analyzing our 2D photo, which is it's just mind-blowing, it really is. But that information can then be used to allow us to brighten up different parts of our photo, whether that's the foreground or the background, and light them independently. If, for example, we want to brighten the foreground, darken down the background, we can actually change the transition point of where it goes from light to dark, and we can also use that de-halo amount to actually allow the light to actually wrap around our subject. Please bear in mind what I'm showing you here are going to be screenshots, and while the photos themselves have been edited, with Luminar Neo, the actual tool palettes themselves are mirrored representational they're not necessarily how the final user interface is going to ship but they are indicative they, they give you an idea right now I actually saw a recording of this particular photo being edited now you can see on the one on the left hand side how the Buddha which is obviously in the distance is brighter and the two characters in the foreground are actually darker than on the edited version where you can see that they are much brighter and the Buddha the brightness on that has been brought right down the fact that you can actually control with that depth slider just how far back the light falls and pull it forward, pull it back, and the de-halo amount, which actually allows you to wrap the light around. It was actually really, really impressive to see that in action, and I'm really excited to actually get hold of this and start playing around with it. I think the ability to light the foreground elements more than the background, vice versa, change the lighting in that kind of way, really has a lot of potential, and it's something I commonly do inside of Lightroom and Photoshop, those kind of adjustments.
With regards to Relight AI, there's something I just feel I need to clear up and clarify because I think some people actually misunderstand how this tool is going to work. When we talk about changing the position of the light in three dimensions, we're talking about the Z axis, the front to back axis, not left, right, up, down, all of that stuff as well. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Don't, don't set your expectations too high. I think it's gonna be a really um, super intelligent, really useful tool but um, just manage your expectations of it. Right, let's look at the next tool. I think the next thing is one of the absolute headline acts of Luminar Neo, and that is Mask AI. Now this is not shipping with the initial launch. It's something that's going to come out in update number one, a free update. So the subsequent updates, just like with Luminar AI, tools that are still being worked on will be added to the program with future updates. And Mask AI is one of those, but I'm so excited by the prospect of this tool. You know how good Luminar AI is at actually recognizing objects in a scene. So for example, you might load up a photo of some food and then the next thing you know, in the template section on Luminar AI, it's actually recommending food-based templates. It's really clever. So the AI is able to recognize objects in a scene. So once again, what else could we do with that information? Can we not push that further? Well, absolutely we can with Luminar Neo. The cool thing is it's gonna enable us to select objects. It's as if you're talking to your computer saying, computer, select the waterfall. Computer, select the mountains and it actually doing it for you. So initially there's going to be 11 classes that are gonna be available, such as sky, mountains, water, vegetation, things like this, and you can select them and Luminar AI will be able to very intelligently work out where those things are and mask them automatically. You've then got access to all of your editing tools, your layers and everything to utilize those masks on that particular area. And so the creativity of how you actually utilize those masks is entirely up to you. But the prospect of the time saving of just getting the computer to do that masking for me, uh, Awesome. Now, while we're on the subject of Mask AI, I just want to touch on something just for the people who like to whinge out there, okay, and say, oh, Skylum charged too much, oh, another update, oh, that's expensive. Right, put it into context. Topaz Labs have a Mask AI tool on the market. It's $99 just for that one AI feature, Mask AI, which is gonna be built in along with all the other stuff inside of Luminar and Neo. And within that tool in Topaz Labs, what you need to do is actually tell the AI where the edge of the object is with a paintbrush. And then you fill the area that you say, this is the area I want to keep. And then the computer will then do a computation and select that object for you. So it's a several step process. You're still doing a lot of the work for it, whereas Luminar Neo is gonna do it for you. So yeah, putting things in context when people whinge, I just think that the tools that you get inside of the Luminar products are just excellent value, okay? I know that some of you are gonna be like, oh, you're just saying that and you're so biased. Like genuinely, you look at Luminar, I'm off on one now. You look at Luminar AI and I've shown before how just within the light panel, you have access to pretty much all of the same editing features that is inside of Lightroom. And then on top of that, you have all of Luminar AI's really clever, intelligent AI editing tools as well. And it's a fraction of the cost. And oh, Anyway, I'm getting distracted. We're gonna move on to the next tool, which is similar to Mask AI, but this is Portrait Mask AI. Is that right? Is that what it's called? Okay, the last tool that we'll shed some light on is the Portrait Background Removal AI tool. Why so specific? And there's a good reason for that as well. If you remember when Bokeh AI tool was released, um, there was a lot of kind of pushback from people who were really disappointed because it only worked on people. It wasn't a generic uh, Bokeh AI tool. Oh, I've got a parrot and I want to blur the background some more. Um, it didn't do that. It only recognized humans. And that was a real disappointment for people. So again, I think in the name of managing expectations, Skylum are being really specific about this tool. So this this bit of AI is incredibly complex. It's one of those things that you probably don't really give it the credit for, but the human brain is trained to look at humans in photos, right? And as soon as you see someone and they're cut out and they're done badly on a 
green or blue screen or you know the the hair isn't done very well you spot it a mile off and so to have a technology which is going to be able to mask people and do it believably remove the background and do it with like one click that is going to be an absolute game changer and it's a separate thing to the mask ai because the technology that's driving it is very different it has to be so much more refined when it is working with humans it has to be so much more precise we have hair we have fine details around our clothes all of that sort of stuff and so it's a separate tool so it's really cool because we're going to be able to use this technology to effortlessly extract our subject from the original background and use the layers inside of Luminar Neo to introduce a new background. And as you can see from these examples, if you look carefully, Luminar Neo is actually smart enough to relight the subject to match the new environment that we've placed them onto. So that's pretty clever. You can particularly see it here in this example. Separating a subject from a separate background image does obviously require layers, and that's a perfect segue to the final tool we'll look at today. I'm really excited that Luminar Neo is going to be reintroducing layers. For a creative image edit, layers really do give you so many more options. We're going to be able to work with raw images, JPEG, PNGs that include transparency. We can utilize blending modes, masking, different opacity, all of the things that you'd expect from layers and much more as well. Luminar Neo is going to include some built-in overlays, different objects inside a library which we can call upon. And in some of these examples, you can see here how they're being added into the photos. So it's combining Neo's new AI masks with the ability to layer up different elements. So this is really exciting. If you pre-order Luminar Neo, you are going to save some money and I've got a link in the description below. Existing customers save even more money as well. And really good news is Skylum have announced this week that they will be creating a tool to enable us to migrate our existing catalogs from Luminar 4 and Luminar AI over to Luminar Neo. So if you do like the look of this, I've got a link below so you can save yourself some money if you haven't pre-ordered it already. I know you've probably been wondering this whole time now, how much have Skylum paid me for this video? Hmm. It's actually a question that I got from somebody in the comments, and I'm guessing it's somebody who doesn't actually watch my content or my videos normally, because regular viewers of my channel will know that I do a lot of free training around Luminar 4, more recently Luminar AI. So of course, I'm interested if Skylum are releasing a new product, I wanna know about it. Is it gonna make the training that I'm doing redundant? What do I need to know about the new software? And if I have that information, I know that my audience is gonna be interested in that information as well. So here I am making a video about it. Have they paid me for this video or the previous video? No, absolutely not. And I know that there'll be some of you skeptics out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let me just tell you this. YouTube have made it very clear that content creators, if they're doing a paid promotional piece, if they're reviewing something, they're getting paid, they have to clearly state that in their video to you guys. So if you're doing a paid promotion and you don't declare it, you're in breach of YouTube's terms and conditions and it's within their right and very probable that they will just wipe your account. So when people are being paid to produce a video, you'll know about it. I mean, come on, photographers, right? You must have heard, this video was brought to you by Square something, right? It's prevalent, it's out there, and people have to tell you that they're being sponsored. So just to be clear, this is not a paid video from Skylum. Having said that though, you can support my channel by using the link in the description. It costs you no more. I get a very small commission just by sending you in the direction of Luminar Neo. I'm really excited by Luminar Neo, but that's me. If you don't think it's the right software for you, don't go and buy it, don't use the link, it's fine. But in any case, I thank you very much for watching and I hope this video has been informative and got you up to speed with what Luminar Neo is all about. I thank you very much for your time watching and I'll see you in the next video. Click the one that's on screen right now, you might like it. Cheers guys, see you soon.